I am a notary. You can. Uh, okay. Well, you can do it then. I'll let you go ahead and explain that. Okay. My name is. Uh, let's do a commercial first. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, today's date is January the seventh, nineteen ninety-two. It's approximately nine forty. We're at the Dayton Rehabilitation Center, and commonly known as the Workhouse. And my name is William Riley, and. Uh, present is the attorney who's video cam uh, recording this. Steve and Hobbs. His name is Steve Hobbs, and I'm talking to Gary Heath. Is that spelled H-E-A-T-H? -E -T -H, yes. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Has anybody coerced you, uh, forced you, promised you, or asked you under any other conditions except to tell the truth about the following statement? No. Okay. Um, well, let me turn this recorder on. Do you mind, first of all, that we're going to tape record uh, the following conversation no. and camcord? No. Okay. Um, have you met me before today? No, nope. never seen okay. you before. Okay. And have I introduced myself as an investigator for Mr. Hobbs? Yes, you have. Okay. Um, first of all, what what are we going to be talking about today? Do you, do you are you familiar with why we're here? Uh, yeah, about the, the truth tell? about. Uh, uh, what I testified to and why I testified and uh, who fed me the information just the whole thing. In what, in, re in reference to what investigation? Uh, the death of Lisa Buckley. And who was arrested subsequent for that? Uh, Billy Scott in a yeah. roundabout way. He wasn't really arrested. He well, was uh, sentenced on a prior conviction. Right, but they suspect him of... Oh yeah, well, yeah they, so they suspect him. They want him real bad. That's how they got me involved in this. Okay. Um, when did you first become involved? First of all, that's for the for the camcorder. What are you in, in the workhouse for? Uh, right now, aggravated menacing. I was also in for assault, but I served that sentence. It was okay. not just aggravated menacing. And what are you going back to to Eaton for? Uh, County? I understand Preble County is supposed to pick me up uh, tomorrow on the eighth uh, to be put on probation on the ninth. Okay, and are they trying to revoke your probation or parole? Uh, my parole officer says in a roundabout way, no, but I'm getting a lot of pressure over this Preble County, at least a Buckley case. So what they've indicated to you is if you don't cooperate, something could happen on your parole. Right. Is that true? Right. And it's not so much if I don't cooperate. If I don't play it their way, then something's going to happen. Well, that's what I meant by, quote, cooperate. Okay. Um, when did you first become involved with this investigation, with the, the Scott investigation, Buckley investigation. You mean with an investigator or with Billy himself or with uh, uh, the prosecution? Or? Okay, did Billy, t did prior to the prosecution talking to you, did Billy discuss this with you? Uh, no, just other than just denials. Okay, know, so he denied it from the beginning. Yeah. Said he was getting what? Uh, How did he deny it? What did he say? Just said that he was being made a scapegoat because of his past record, which isn't uncommon because I've been made a scapegoat because of my past record before. Okay. And so, how many time? How long were you in with uh, with Billy? Uh, I was. I don't know what day he, he was there before I got there. I got arrested on the fourteenth of May, and. Uh, Billy was transferred out about two, about the, the last, thir 31st of August, I guess, or July, I guess it was. And I was transferred here the 2nd of August. So a couple of months. Yeah. Sure, so. All right, months. let me ask you, uh, with how you've been in and out of jails before, is that correct? Right. I mean, you're familiar with the institutional process. Right. Okay, are you also familiar that a lot of times cellmates hear information about other cases and then trade that? to better their position on a plea bargain on their case or volunteer information for uh, purposes of making their sentence lighter or to cut a deal with the prosecution. Are you familiar with that oh, process? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been involved in one of those situations? No. Okay. Uh, is that the premise that the prosecutor approached you with or the idea, when I say premise, the idea that the prosecutor approached you with? Right when he first uh, met you? Right. He was an investigator for the prosecutor's office. And who was that? Dave Lindloff. Do you know him or have you known him prior to this time? Never had any contact with any uh, Provo County sheriff's deputy, prosecutor, judge, lawyer, nothing prior to uh, 
May. Okay, and in May, he come, he came to you. You didn't solicit him or call for him. No, this was in July. Oh, I'm sorry, in July. July. Okay, what were you arrested for in May? Uh, Florence assault. Okay, and that's you've already done your. That was broken that. down to two misdemeanors, but that right. was broken down. It had nothing to do with uh, uh, helping the prosecution on the Bundy case. Okay, all. so that was broken down prior to him right. approaching you in July. Right. 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 Okay. And did you have an attorney on that case? Yes. And who was that? Attorney? Stephen Bruns. Would Steve Bruns verify what we're talking about today as far as the case being dealt with and the conditions already made prior to you uh, okay. meeting with Lindbaugh? Yeah, Mr. Hobbs knows that too. Okay. I know, but we had to verify this yeah. independently. Yeah, there was nothing, uh, there was no uh, contact between me and uh, the prosecution or me and the investigators uh, about the Buckley case that had anything to do with uh, getting my, my Florence assault charge wasn't Florence assault, it was no, nothing but a nasty divorce and it just, uh, Steve Bruns just kept pushing that and that's what it was. It was just a nasty divorce, it never happened. Okay. And, uh, I so guess you that, had uh, two misdemeanors and you've served, uh, you're finishing up serving that time now. Right. Okay, when you were approached in July, uh, how did that happen, how did that occur? Uh, Dave Lindloff came up, pulled me out of the cell, back in the interview room, uh, kind of like had like a shitty grin on his face. Uh, says, you know, they kind of got me over a barrel and uh, he don't really believe it all, but, you know, the system works the way the system works and uh, thought that he might be able to do me a favor if I would do him one. At the time, uh, my emotional status because of the nasty divorce, uh, my now ex-wife was trying to keep me from ever seeing my son again, uh, harassment and all kinds of stuff like that. It had me in an emotional position where I listened to what he had to say uh, and I sternly refused. At that time, I was sternly refused. You said, no, I don't want any part of it. I Cause, because, uh, Steve Bruns was telling me that we could beat this Florence assault case because it never happened. Okay. What what did, let me get back to the original conversation. I understand briefly what you just described with Lindlock, but what did he say? I mean, besides just saying we've got you over a barrel, and uh, what did, did he indicate what they wanted from you? Yeah. Um, he asked me how well that I got to know Billy Scott. Uh, really, I didn't get to know him all that well. I mean, same jail, you play cards together, you, you watch TV together, you talk together a little bit. I mean, you really don't know anything about anybody. Uh, asked me what I thought about a man that would do uh, hideous things to a girl and uh, explain those things to me that was done to this girl. Uh, it's kind of sickening. Uh, said that they knew for a fact that he did it, but they can't really prove it and they need to uh, shore up their case a little bit. And they want he volunteered to, that to you? Right. Oh, he volunteered all the information to me. He had well, a I'm going to get into that minute, but I'm interested in that. The, for the initial approach to you was that, that they needed to support their case. Right. They said that they didn't want to go into court on this uh, and then lose and not have any, no way of coming back on them again. They wanted to shore up their case the first time. And they wanted me to... Uh, uh, I guess be their uh, uh, the, the, the person that could tie it all together. So they had all the pieces of the puzzle, but I was the glue that was going to hold it together for them. I see. That's how he described it. Right. Okay. Let me jump back for just a second. I, I hate to jump back and forth, but let me clarify this. We didn't bring the file with us today. Is that correct? No. We don't have any file. I don't have any of the dates, so I need to really jump back and forth to get this in proper perspective. Okay. When you were in jail with Billy, we said for about two months. And about two and a half. Months. About two and a half months, and you played cards and you taught. Do, do you work in the in the when you're in the Provo County Jail? I need to get the routine. Is there any work? Are you out of the no. cell? So all your time's idle time. Right. Pretty it's much. It's all like sitting in there, uh, sleeping, eating, playing cards, talking. Okay. Using the phones, okay. stuff like writing letters. It is common for some inmates when they're in that kind of situation to talk about their cases, is that correct? Uh, rookies, you know, new boys that are not familiar with the system, they do. People experienced through the system usually don't say nothing. That's the point I want to get. Why? Uh, either it's happened to you before or it's, you've heard about it happening to somebody else you've done time with where uh, 
uh, so and so will cut a deal to testify against you or uh, uh, fabricate information to make things work a little bit easier on him or just a variety of reasons. But experienced people don't talk about their case. And would you consider yourself, and I don't mean this in a derogatory sense, would you consider yourself experienced to the system? Sure. Okay, and what about Billy? Do you consider him experienced to the system? Uh, I would say with his past, with his background, yeah. yeah. Okay. Does, um, do you know how, what, describe how he conducted himself while he was in, in uh, jail with you? Um, somewhat worried about the case that he was in there on, uh, which, you know, he had a reason to be worried. Uh, confused on why the system was pursuing it when uh, he felt his life was in danger and he was just protecting him and his girlfriend. Uh, a little uh, emotional because of what it was doing to the, his relationship with his girlfriend. Uh, it was separating the families and, uh, just the trauma of going through what what he was going through. He was going through a, a, a big deal. I okay. Um, did he have a reputation in the jail? Uh, with the staff there, yeah. They what? knew that if anything happened in that cell, that uh, Billy wouldn't let it get too far. Okay, why? Uh, Billy didn't cause no trouble while he was there. Uh, we respected Julie Withrow, which was the head jailer. Uh, we, uh, we were looked upon by the staff to uh, maintain in the cell. I mean, we didn't like take over, but uh, as far as um, keeping the place clean, you know, keeping the new boys in line, and not, you know, just, they looked to us as the oldest ones in the cell, been there the longest, and kind of maintained. Okay. So, um, outside of normal routine, day in, day out, he didn't discuss his case, you didn't discuss your case, you just talked about run the mill things or emotions or that kind of stuff. Is that uh, didn't talk about his case. Uh, he let me read a transcript of the preliminary or pretrial or whatever you call it. You know. Uh, you know, that just, you know, talked about, you know, what he felt at that moment when he had to shoot those people because he thought his life was in danger. Um, we had a, got a law book and copy of the ORC from the staff and, you know, we were going through that, you know, find things that help on my case and on his case and uh, uh, as far as like discussing each other's cases, uh, you know, it'd just be like, well, How about details? No. How about the Buckley case? Did you discuss that at all? Uh, very one? briefly, um, he, they come up and drop the search warrant on him. One day, I don't know the exact day. I know it was a Tuesday. I do know that. And the reason I know that is because the jail doctor comes in on Tuesdays, and me and Billy had signed up to see the doctor, and uh, I had signed up first, and then I think another Tom Newberry had signed up, and Billy was the third on the list. But when they come back and pulled Billy out first, and he was gone quite a while, and uh, he come back and he was all shook up and everything, well, they had dropped a search warrant on him for hair and uh, uh, pubic hair and head hair or something like that. You know, some hair samples, they dropped the search warrant on him. And it kind of had him shook up because this was just right before the trial that he was in there on. The shootings in New Paris was supposed to take off. Uh, you know, that was before. The, there was, yeah, it got a continuance, but he didn't, you know, it wasn't known it was going to be continued. This was right before that trial. So really had him shook up. Uh, he was on the phone a lot trying to find out what, what was going on, talking to his first lawyer, Mr. Moser in Hamilton and his parents. Uh, asked him what was wrong, he let me read the search warrant. Uh, you know, he said it was all bullshit, you know. And yeah, he was there, he found the body. Uh, other than that, you know, nothing. And uh, that was the first time that I even heard about this case, was from him. But that was very, very briefly, just about the search warrant, you know, and he had him shut up. And, uh, when was the trial? Was that supposed to be the 27th of July? His yeah. first trial was in June. It was supposed to be. It was continued. Okay. 
So the first time you're talking about it sometime... The first time I ever heard the word or the name Lisa Buckley was prior to his first trial, and that was from him, and that was just very brief on why he was shook up over that search warrant. And then the next time that I heard it was out of Lebanon last month. So you had one discussion, and that was because of the That discussion form. between me and Billy lasted probably uh, 10 minutes. And that was June of 1991? Right. Okay. Uh, then you talked to Lindloff in July, July. of 1991. This was prior to his uh, the second coming up of his trial. Okay, and that second trial was scheduled in July, July 27th? July the 20th through the, well, it was like July the 21st. So it would have been sometime the week prior to July 21st, is that what yeah. you're saying? And you said you remember it was what day, or did you, did you say you remember? No, that was on the search warrant. On the search warrant. You don't remember what day no. it was came to. Do you remember what time of the day it was? Uh, I don't know, I'd say it was before lunch. Okay. Let me ask this again to make sure. You did not request Lindloff to come no. see you. You didn't send any correspondence. You didn't make no. any phone calls. You didn't send no. any message to the jailers. No. Nothing. He no. came on his own. Yes. Okay. Is the, what's the procedure, if you know, in uh, Preble County as far as visitations, either by prosecutor, police, or, or, or citizens? Do they have to sign into a jail log or visitation card or? You have no idea. I don't know. I, I know now my visitors, like my sister and brother-in-law that was coming to the Jones I think they had to sign in. But as far as like attorneys or uh, law enforcement or anybody like that, I, I don't know. Do you know, do you have to sign in when you come to the no. You don't? No, okay. and neither would have been left. So. so they don't have jail logs or anything like that. Do we know, is there a normal shift? This was in the daytime prior to noon. Is, it, is, it, is there a, a continuing uh, the same person continue on the shift each day with as yeah, far as the jailer. Time I was there. Who would have been the jailer?